benefit from better connectivity is Bloomfield Robotics. They've built a camera that mounts on an ATV or piece of farm equipment and an artificial intelligence-based platform that processes images for more informed decision-making. Here's CEO Mark DeSantis at one of our FOA community pitch events. We take pictures of plants, individual plants. I make that point by saying not crops, but individual plants wherever they are. And then we use AI to determine the health and performance of that plant. But with all these fancy cameras and artificial intelligence, the natural immediate question on many people's minds is, but why though? Since uh, the Mesopotamians grew crops 10,000 years ago, visual inspection by humans is the dominant method of detecting things. Whether it's walking through a vineyard, looking at tomatoes or whatever it might be, you're spending, sending somebody out ideally who's qualified to walk among the crops, whether they be row crops or specialty crops and render judgments about those things. That's costly and highly variable. Um, When you use humans to inspect anything, we are human and we come with biases and um, predispositions. We also at times are tired and fatigued. Now, this line of thinking is not new. I mean, we have been learning to take images and process them for decades in agriculture. But most of that has been done through drone, fixed wing or satellite imagery. Mark says what differentiates Bloomfield is the angle in which they're able to capture the images. The problem with that, using aerial observation from above, you can't see the fruit. There are plants where you need to get perpendicular to the plant. And so for us, it's about taking an image of a plant, getting perpendicular to it, and then using that as the basis for our analysis. Their name is Bloomfield Robotics, but the robotics part is a bit of a misnomer, at least for now. They're not really building a robot to take these images, which I actually think is smart because for now it creates less of a barrier up front for people to start using their technology. The camera that we use on the back is effectively a stereo camera and it has its own light source and it's geolocated. I mentioned geolocated because the motto of our company is every plant matters. And so you want to geolocate what you're looking at. Now that imaging my plants, taking pictures of them and analyzing them is very cheap, I can do it a lot. And if I want to do it a lot, then I can do it temporally. So I know that that's vine five, row six. But in the end, does a farmer really want this? Or is this just something cool we can talk about on a podcast? If all we're doing is satisfying somebody's mild curiosity, we don't have a business. That's what the problem with a lot of AI companies is they're, they're satisfying curiosities. They're not driving decisions. And I learned that in my previous AI companies the hard way. And so what we're trying to do is we work backward from the grower's decisions and many decisions we didn't know about, things, choices they had to make during the course of a year. And so we always start with a choice and then work backward into what can our visual observation improve or drive about that choice. It's interesting. I, I'll make an observation. When people realize that they can image their entire vineyard, every single vine, continuously, it opens up their thinking to a whole different way of thinking about the vineyard and how they manage it. It's sort of a mind shift. If I can literally know the condition of every plant all the time, it changes their thinking. It brings about true precision agriculture. One aspect of AI that is truly exciting is that it learns and gets better over time. So the larger the image database gets, theoretically, the more effective the algorithm becomes. And ultimately, we hope the more insights can be gleaned for farmers. As we start collecting more and more data already, you are collecting digital phenotypes of everything you see. And you're seeing more and more of those. So with every instance of a Syrah grape, we get a little bit smarter about a Syrah grape, a Syrah grape at inflorescence, a Syrah grape at harvest, and so on. And those become what I call digital phenotypes. And that digital phenotype for that particular plot of ground or that vine or that grape produces a result that we've now recorded. And we're doing it on a massive scale. So we're creating as a residual outcome what we're doing, a massive digital database of plant phenotypes. So now you've opened up perhaps another market of breeders, of growers who want to meta-analysis their crops, differential treatment down to the plant level, unlike any before. And so what's happened is the beautiful thing about AI 
is that it's made it so that it's now really, really inexpensive. And my first AI company was 15 years ago using image processing. Three years ago, I could not have made this claim, but literally now, if you can see it, a machine can see it and see it with more precision and accuracy than a human looking at the same plan. Well, thank you so much to Mark DeSantis at Bloomfield for participating in our FOA community pitch event. Uh, If you're listening and you'd like to join us for virtual events like that one, I'd invite you to join our community over at patreon.com forward slash agriculture. But that's it for episode 228. I'm really excited about a more connected future for agriculture. Thanks so much for your time and your attention. I'll be back next week with another story of ag innovation. 